Welcome to Your Healthy Kitchen from YRMC. Welcome to YRMC's Your Healthy Kitchen. I'm your host, Rita Carey Rubin. You know, I know many of us are cooking at home more often, and perhaps, like me, you're relying on a variety of simple pantry staples to make delicious, comforting meals. You know, I've cleaned out and restocked my pantry several times this year, and there are two items I always seem to have on hand, tomatoes, and garbanzo beans. <laughs> and there are hundreds, if not thousands of meals that you can create with these two simple ingredients. From soups and salads to sandwiches and sauces, canned tomatoes and garbanzos probably find their way into my meals every week. You know, it's easy to create dishes that reflect the seasons too by simply blending these staples with the produce and herbs that are growing right here in our local farming community year round. So I am going to dive right into cooking today and share two of my favorite pantry meals with some suggestions for working in some seasonal produce and herbs. So first recipe is tomato soup. So I have great memories as a child um, of having tomato soup and grilled cheese sandwiches. That's like my childhood comfort food, uh, eaten on a TV tray Sunday night while the Disney show is on. And I, I know that is dating me somewhat, but that's, that's the way it was. And I still love tomato soup. And it's really easy to make a tomato soup at home that is delicious and so much better than the canned varieties. So first recipe is my tomato soup. And right now I have in this pot, I have some leeks that are sauteing. This is a leek. And it's sauteing in some olive oil, half olive oil and half butter. And I love butter in this soup because it adds a bit of a richness to the soup. And I prefer using a butter that comes from grass-fed cows. And you can find Kerrygold brand butter everywhere these days. It's fabulous. It comes from Ireland, I think. And, um, and it's from grass-fed cows, meaning that actually the fat in the butter is much better for you. The butter is actually much more nutritious. So I have a, a, a leek. And I cut off the dark green and kept the light green and the, and the white part of the leek. And if you don't have a leek, you can use uh, other kinds of onions. You could use just a regular white onion. Or in season right now, this came in my community share agriculture box from Whipstone Farm, these lovely scallions. You could use scallions as well. So that's sauteing, and I like to saute the onion for about 10 minutes. That's why I started it early uh, at kind of a medium-high heat. I don't want to burn it, but I want that onion to have a lot of flavor and to be nice and tender. So to the pot, I am going to add a two chopped dates. Because tomatoes, I'm going to make this soup with canned tomatoes, sometimes they can be a little tart. And you'll often see in canned tomato soup, you'll see there's a lot of sugar added. So rather than use sugar, I'm using a whole food sweetener, dates which have a lot of nutrients and fiber and a really nice sweetness. So that goes in the pot. I am going to um, grate a little bit of fresh nutmeg in there. Just a little, doesn't take much. Um, it's about a, a, maybe an eighth of a teaspoon. So running it across the grater just a few times. And a nice dash of black pepper. And there's some salt in there as well. And saute that up a little bit. And when the onions are done, which they are, you guys can see that. The leeks are nice and tender. I'm going to add some tomatoes. And uh, first in the form of either tomato paste or what, something that I always have in hand are uh, Trader Joe's uh, sun-dried tomatoes in olive oil. And if you're using tomato paste, look for the paste that comes in a tube like this. This is uh, from Italy. It's concentrated tomato paste. Because if you're like me, if I buy a can of tomato paste, I use part of it. It goes in the refrigerator or in a container in the refrigerator, and then it gets mold on it because I, I don't use it again. So, but the, the tube tomato paste is great. Is it stays fresh in your refrigerator for a really long time, and you don't wind up wasting it. Um, so you can do tomato paste or, like I said, uh, some Trader Joe's sun-dried tomatoes and with a little olive oil. I'm going to take out a nice 
big spoonful. It's going to add a lot of richness and real strong tomato flavor to the dish. And then next is to add something to thicken the soup. So I'm going to make what's called a roux, which is combining flour with fat and sauteing the fat for, for a little while, uh, the, the flour for a little while, and then we're going to add a liquid to it. And that's going to make a nice thick sauce, basically. So I've got a couple tablespoons of just plain wheat flour. If you want to make this uh, recipe gluten-free, look for um, something called sweet rice flour. Not just regular rice flour, but sweet rice flour will thicken things just like wheat flour will. I had to find this online. I couldn't find any locally. So this has gluten. It's got its wheat flour. And um, I'll saute this just a, just a minute. And that, that time that I'm sauteing will brown the flour a little bit. It will combine it with the fat. And when I add the liquid, that's going to help that um, my roux or the sauce to thicken, thicken up a little bit. And then the trick with adding the roux is to do it in a way where you pre prevent getting lumps. So I've got some, some broth here. This has to, happens to be just um, boxed chicken broth. And while I, I'm going to switch hands here. I'm a righty. Um, while I pour in the, the broth, I just whisk it. And all that does is it just makes sure you don't have a big lump that is not going to taste very good or feel very good in your soup. And I'm just going to let this come back to a boil. And we're going to add some more ingredients. But while that cooks, I'm going to dive into the second recipe, which is a really delicious and simple uh, pasta dish using uh, bow ties or any kind of uh, pasta that has some shape, and my all-time favorite garbanzo beans, which I have a lot of at home. And uh, so bow ties are really fun, but like I said, any kind of shape, because the, uh, the sauce is really simple here. It's just olive oil, garlic, some crushed red pepper, a little salt, and um, some herbs. I have parsley chopped up and the garbanzo beans. That's it. So right now, my pot's nice and hot. Because the sauce for this pasta is just olive oil, I'm doing three tablespoons of olive oil in the pot. And I don't want this, this sauce to get really, um, I don't want the ingredients in the sauce to get really browned or really cooked. So this is just on a low heat. And I'll add some sliced, this happens to be uh, green garlic, which is immature garlic that it's pretty close to the end of the season uh, for it, but sometimes you can still find it at the farmer's market. And about a third cup of some chopped herbs. This happens to be parsley. But in this dish, you could use any kind of herb. Like right now, I have this wonderful bunch of basil that came again in my community share agriculture box. So I could use basil instead of the parsley, or I might throw ba some basil in, in, in addition to the parsley. Um, you could also put some rosemary, mint would be kind of fun, parsley and mint. So just kind of some ways that you can play with what's in season. So saute this just really on low. You're just letting it simmer, simmer slowly with a little bit of salt. And you know, just adding a little salt as you cook naturally helps bring out the flavor in the food. It's not making that food salty. It's just helping to helping it to be more flavorful, really. So some salt and about a quarter teaspoon of crushed red pepper. And I'm going to let that sit for just a minute. Um, checking on my, my soup here. Looks like that roux is simmering nicely. So I'm, I'm going to add tomato juice. So this happens to be the juice from two big cans of tomatoes. 
that I roasted with a carrot. I'll show you that in just a second. So again, canned tomatoes, sometimes they can just be kind of tart. It depends on how ripe they were when they went into the can, um, you know, the quality of the tomato. So you might need, always need a little something sweet to add to your tomato soup. So I've got the dates in here. And for additional sweetness, what I did at home was roast, oops, um, was roast some whole, whole canned tomatoes with a carrot. And I know it looks like a mess here, but that's just kind of what happens. It's, they're roasted just whole tomatoes that I drained. There's the juice right there. And tossed with a little olive oil with one diced carrot. And what the roasting will do is it, it will bring up the sweetness in the tomatoes as well as the sweetness in the, in the carrots. So along with the juice, I'll add these tomatoes and my carrot and scrape off any of the juice that's on there. I'm not going to scrape the brown bits or the black bits because that's kind of bitter. But any, any little bits that aren't blackened and any of that little bit of olive oil that I added, I'll put that in the pot. And I'll let this just simmer for a little bit. And other than blending this, that's the recipe. <laughs> it's really quick. Um, a substitute that you could play with if you don't have a carrot is some fennel. Fennel happens to be in season uh, late spring, early summer. Uh, sometimes you'll see it throughout the summer at the farmer's market. It has a little bit of a licorice-like flavor. It's very mild. And um, so you could, you could cut, cut up this bulb of fennel and roast it with the tomatoes. And that will just bring a different flavor to the soup, but it'd be really delicious. So my uh, sauce for the pasta is simmering away. And it's ready for the next step, I think, which is to add one can of garbanzo beans that I've just drained and rinsed off. and a little bit of water. So I'm making uh, a little sauce. Also simmering the beans in a flavorful liquid like this will freshen up the beans, because sometimes canned beans have kind of that canned, canned taste. If, if, if I made my beans fresh, I would kind of prefer that, but um, the canned works perfectly for this. And we're just going to simmer. And all those flavors will meld together. So you want lots of herb in there, a little bit of salt, a little spice, and that's all. Gar garlic, of course. Oh, I forgot my soup. I throw in a couple of bay leaves as well, usually, to let that simmer together. But you have to remember to take the bay leaves out before you blend the soup, or you'll get bay leaf chunks. Right before going back to my pasta, right before you add the pasta, so I'm just going to warm up some pasta I've already cooked and throw it in this pan. Right before I add the pasta, I'll also give this uh, dish a little squirt of lemon juice, which is just like the universal flavor brightener that, that I use in my kitchen. I always have lemons. I always have limes, sometimes oranges, some kind of citrus, because it just bright, they brighten up the dish. And especially something with beans, which beans can be a little bland. So um, you want to freshen it up, and lemon is perfect. So I'm just giving it a good squirt, probably about half, half of a lemon. I'll dish out that one seed that went in there. And now I'm going to put my pasta in the water. So this is pre-cooked. It's uh, what you call parboiled. So that means it's, it's almost done. And I'm just really just warming it up right now before I add it to the dish. So while that warms up, you know, a couple things you could add to this pasta dish to shake it up. This is the basic dish. It's just garbanzo beans, some flavor, and pasta. But you could add some seasonal greens. Like there's some great fresh spinach, again, that came in from Whipstone Farm. You could, uh, I would sl slice that kind of thinly 
and throw that in and saute it maybe instead of the, of the parsley and saute that with the olive oil and the garlic. You could also do cabbage. Just look at this giant head of cabbage. Isn't that amazing? Grown locally and pulled in on Whipstone Farm. Um, look at that, it's just beautiful. So you could do the same thing. Slice it very thinly, give it a saute. There's also some great, um, which traditionally we'd call bitter greens, but they belong in the chicory family. Um, lots of different chicories. Escarole is, is part of that family. Thinly slicing some of this in that pasta would be great as well. You could also add tomatoes because you've stored a lot of tomatoes in your pantry. So if you have some canned tomatoes, um, either you know diced already, you can throw that in there. If you have some nice fresh tomatoes, you can throw that in there. If you have some of these lovely Trader Joe's sun-dried tomatoes, put that in your pasta. So you can play with it. It can really morph with what you have on hand. So I'm gonna dig my pasta out. And add it to my pan. And give it a stir. And that's it. That's all there is to it. I think I'll serve some of this out right now. This is a great dish to eat. You want to eat it fresh, like when it's nice and hot. And you can have it just as is. It is really flavorful just the way it is. Or to make it kind of like a grilled cheese sandwich, <laughs> I add some, some cheese. And this is a combination of Parmesan and mozzarella cheese that I'll throw on top. And to make it really fancy, I'm gonna give it a stir. Also top it with some breadcrumbs. It's a very traditional Italian uh, way to serve pasta. Is, um, you know, it seems kind of redundant to put bread on top of pasta, but it's a really good combo. So these are just some, some breadcrumbs that, ha that are made from croutons that I made. Uh, just sliced French bread, toasted in the oven with some olive oil, some Italian seasoning, a little salt and pepper. And, and then I crushed some of those croutons and put that on top of your pasta for a little crunch, a little burst of flavor. And there's a bowl of comfort right there. Done in like, what, five minutes, 10 minutes maybe? Um, the time it takes to cook your pasta, basically dinner is ready. So bow ties with garbanzo beans and garlic and cheese. And now it's time to blend up our soup. So remember, I've got to take that bay leaf out because I have done it where I forgot to take the bay leaf out. And you know, it's okay. It's just all of a sudden you get something that just doesn't feel right, <laughs> a little crunchy. So, uh, so I'll take that out and blend it up. And that's it. You know, you can play too with the type of tomatoes that you have. You could certainly make this soup with fresh tomatoes. The one thing I would recommend is that you probably want to skin the tomatoes, the fresh tomatoes. Um, one thing about tomato skins in soup is that they, they just don't, they don't blend really well. So it's really good. It'll be a texture thing in your soup. You want this soup to be nice and smooth, uh, just like Campbell's. So uh, if you have fresh tomatoes, which are coming into season, just um, skin them. And the way you do that is really simple. You take your tomato, you put a slight X, cut an X on the bottom of the tomato, put it in a pot of boiling water for just a few seconds, dish it out, let it cool, and that, that skin will just slide right off of the tomato. If you have some different kinds of, of canned tomatoes, like fire roasted tomatoes, which I always have at home as well, that would be fun with this soup. And one thing too, so with some recipes, you will see it recommended, or some recipes are written to take the seeds out of the tomatoes. And because they can add a little bit of a bitter 
flavor to your dish. But you know, I have, I've made this soup a million times and I've made it both ways with taking the seeds out and leaving them in and I don't notice any difference. Um, and especially, you know, if you're using fresh tomatoes, the seeds are encased in kind of that little gooey stuff. That's, there's a lot of flavor in there. That's where you get a lot of that umami flavor that gives tomatoes almost like a meaty um, taste. So I say leave the seeds in because it's a whole lot easier. Um, and time saving. So um, just my blended soup is all ready. And since I have those croutons, I think I'll serve it up with some of those. So that's it, two super easy recipes just made with pantry staples. You know, plus a little bit of produce straight from the farm. So remember to check out all of our easy, delicious, and nutrient-packed recipes and, and cooking tutorials at YRMC Health Connect. And you can also join me in my kitchen at home by following me on Facebook at YRMC is Your Healthy Kitchen, where you'll see the latest recipes, photos, and videos of the food I make at home, plus links to my favorite food, nutrition, and gardening destinations on the web. So until next time, eat well, be well, 